Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Phelan Verchild, and I will be your host. Welcome to the premiere episode of Res TV Presents The Phoenix Hour. This is your office hours, ladies and gentlemen, your opportunity to interface with the development team of the wildly popular Phoenix Viewer. Joining me today to my left is Jessica Lyon. Jessica, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am wonderful. It's been a while since I've I've had a chance to talk to you. So, um, what's new? Oh my gosh. So, we have a lot of new things um, going on. First thing I'd like to bring up is um, a special thank you to Rez.tv uh, for um, partnering with uh, the Phoenix Viewer team and um, helping us facilitate uh, the ability to communicate with the rest of Second Life. Uh, the last office hour we had, we crashed two sims in a four sim um, location, and uh, so it became obvious that we needed to pursue uh, another solution because we have so much interest in the Phoenix viewer. And um, I, I talked to Phelan, a good friend of mine here, and special thank you to Phelan for taking uh, so much time out of her very busy life um, to host this for us and help us with this as well. And uh, so we have uh, partnered with Res TV. Um, in, um, in the hopes that we can reach a much larger audience. And I'd like to thank everybody uh, that's here for coming. I'd like to thank everybody on the stream uh, for watching. Um, and uh, you can submit your questions to Toxic Menjez if you're in the audience here. Uh, or you can post your questions on uh, the website, the phoenix.res.tv uh, website. Um, so we have a few uh, announcements to make, but I'd like to introduce to you uh, some of our developers. They're not all here today, but we got most of them. Um, to my immediate left, uh, to your right, is Tanya Sather. Uh, she is our Mac developer. She's the lead for Mac um, binaries. Anybody that's on the Mac viewer, she is the one that uh, built it. Um, next to her is a box that says, insert LGG here. Uh, this would be uh, Lord Greg Gregg who um, couldn't make it today, he wanted to. Um, and uh, Lord Greg is our Windows uh, lead developer. And to uh, his left is Techwell Flopindo. He is our uh, Linux and uh, Linux lead developer and um, our, our server administrator. And uh, to the left of him is Liney O'Dell, uh, who is a Windows dev. Uh, we have Kata. Um, who is a Windows dev. Vortex Sato is our um, everything dev. Um, he basically does everything uh, on the back end. Jira, uh, our mail system, uh, you name it. Uh, we have to the left of him, um, I can't tell in the tag orders here, let me just zoom in a bit. Right, so to the left of Vortex is Wolf Spirit, and Wolf Spirit is um, our QA lead. He runs Quality Assurance. And uh, he runs the team that makes sure that our releases are solid. Uh, to his left is Wickman Gibbs, a uh, Windows developer. Um, to his left is Ed Merriman, who most of you already know as our support lead. Um, he runs the support team, and he is the go-to guy for our other official languages. Um, and to the left of him is Aaron Oberlander, who is uh, our Viewer 2 dev. Um, we'll all be working on Viewer 2, but uh, he's one of the ones who has quite a bit of experience on it. So there you have it. There is the Phoenix development team in a nutshell. And oh, is there anybody else we're missing? I hope I didn't miss anybody. Did I miss anyone? I believe we have some of our wonderful support team in the audience. Yes, we do. Um, I can't name them all because there's so many of them. Um, but they're off to our right here, and I see them all in yellow dots in the mini-map. Thank you all for coming. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is if, if you have questions for any member of this team up here, please feel free to submit them to Toxic Menges, who is the blue hologram out in the audience, and send... Um, Ludy Graves, any of your concerns, if you have any issues, um, please let him know. Toxic Menges for questions. Also, please remember that on the website, if you have any trouble here, if you crash and can't get back in, 
You can also watch live via phoenix.res.tv. So let me turn my attention for a moment while we get your questions to Jessica. Jessica, how is the Phoenix Europe doing? Um, well, we have a few announcements to make. I guess I should do that now. Um, most of you are probably already on it. If you're not, you're missing out. Uh, this morning, officially, we released a 1.5.1.373. It is by far our most stable and fastest viewer release that we have ever put out far. We plan to get them even better next time. Um, and um, we've had uh, great reviews on it. It's been through our QA team uh, for quite a few days, and um, we're very proud of it, very happy about it. Um, another announcement is um, our web developer has been ill for the last two weeks. Um, she is back, and we expect to have our new website up online by the end of this week, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's a great website. It's easy to, um, to go through and uh, browse, and uh, there's lots of great information on there. Um, what, what else? Uh, we have had a lot of users request that we put up a forum. Uh, the developers aren't particularly keen on a forum because forums are generally uh, a nightmare to moderate. Um, so one thing that we did s suggest that is uh, if some of the users would like to create a forum that's not officially affiliated with us, but it's about the Phoenix viewer, we would welcome that. And I'm glad to say that uh, one of our support people has uh, gone on her own and is making a forum for that purpose. Uh, we will make an announcement about that once it's ready for uh, everybody to use. Um, but I'll be clear, uh, the forum, we're not moderating it. The, the developers here aren't moderating it. We will be um, trying to keep an eye on it, um, but it will be up to uh, the people who um, are in charge of it to uh, maintain it. Uh, let me see, another thing. We have uh, a really good wiki. It's not finished yet, but it's pretty much ready for you guys to view. If you guys need uh, help with support and things like that, um, you can get to it by uh, wiki.phoenixviewer.com. Um, on there is a, uh, you'll see at the very top is a list of in-world groups, and uh, there's links to those groups, and most of those groups are support groups for different languages. We support, um, right now, Hungarian, Italian, Spanish, uh, French, German, and Portuguese. Um, we intend to um, improve on that as time continues. But uh, those are the official uh, language groups that we have right now, and they're listed on that wiki, along with all kinds of other um, troubleshooting uh, uh, pages and things like that. And uh, finally, what are we doing after 373? Um, inventory links. Uh, so something that we've had a lot of people ask us about, um, Viewer2 has this great little feature called Inventory Links, and we are, oh, there's my phone. So we are, of course, um, of course. Of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are busy working on uh, Inventory Links, and we hope to have it in the next release. Uh, this will also give you version 2 style um, uh, avatar attachments. And um, that's about it for the announcement. That's incredible. that's incredible. That's exciting. What a lineup. That's an absolutely phenomenal lineup. So we have a lot to look forward to. There's a whole lot of stuff coming uh, down the road. We are also moving to Viewer 2, as I mentioned in our last office hour. And um, now that we've got 373 out, uh, and it's stable, and it's solid, and we've taken care of 90% of the crash issues, and I'd say about 90% of the texture and sculpt issues that we had in previous builds. Um, we are going to be uh, turning our focus towards our Firestorm for view, uh, Viewer 2 uh, viewer. And uh, we will continue on our 1.5, um, but our main focus is going to be on uh, Viewer 2 now because we need to get that out. We hope to get it out to you guys within about six months. We hope to have it um, set up in such a way and looking in such a way that you will want to use it. Um, we don't want to give you something that you don't want to use because you'll never move from 1.5 uh, to the viewer 2.
CRISP, and I've had a lot of questions about Vera 2, and um, we've had a lot of people ask, um, are we going to support projection? Are we going to support uh, or provide that feature? Are we going to provide uh, all these Viewer 2 features uh, that people keep asking for? Um, the reality is, yes, we will, but it, it will be in our Firestorm viewer, um, not our uh, Phoenix viewer. So, and to clear up that misconception, we will have two viewers on the grid at some point. Uh, we will have the Phoenix viewer, which is 1.5 snow globe based. And we will have Firestorm, which is version 2, uh, probably 2.2 based, uh, depending on the timing and depending on Linen Lab. Fantastic. That's exciting. That is incredibly exciting. Jessica, what I'd like to do just briefly before we move on to questions, if you don't mind, is I would like to um, give some of our developers up here just about a minute of FaceTime. I know that you've had the privilege of, work of working with each and every one of them um, during this adventure and bringing together this, this wonderful viewer for, for us all to use and enjoy. Um, and a lot of these developers aren't typically very public facing. Some of them don't use voice. Um, some of them, so it's, it's truly a privilege and an honor for them to have stepped out of their, out of their workplace to come and join us today and introduce themselves to the audience so we have a face to put to the name on the masthead. So Jessica, I know that Sonia, uh, Tanya doesn't talk on voice. Why don't you tell me a little bit about her role? She's the lead developer for the Mac operating system, correct? Right. right. So Tanya How long has Tanya been with the team? Uh, Tanya came to um, uh, Emerald, in fact, uh, shortly before all the um, nightmarish stuff happened. And uh, she was there to help with the Mac builds. And um, she was uh, one of my first choices when uh, I decided to um, get Phoenix Viewer going. And um, Tanya is a very good Mac developer, uh, really knows her stuff. Um, and uh, has uh, fixed up a lot of issues, a lot of Mac bu uh, bugs that we've had. Um, and uh, from what I understand, I believe, because for Mac users, um, the Mac users out there will, will know uh, what PPC stands for. Um, and unfortunately, Viewer 1.5 uh, doesn't support or won't run on PPC Mac, build, uh, Mac computers. Um, Tanya is uh, hoping to be able to um, fix that problem. Uh, well, well, we can't done. make any well, promises. <laughs> no promises. That's definitely a goal. It's good to meet you, Tanya. Thank you for joining us today. Let's move on to Tech with Lapindo, who I know very well has voice. Hello, Tech with. No, I don't have voice. Yes, you do. <laughs> and you sound lovely. How are you? Yes, yeah, so I'm doing okay today. Basically, I just do mostly the Linux fixes, and uh, for the past few weeks, I've been working on texture fixes, so that's why there's a lot, quite a few texture fixes in this latest release. I managed to troubleshoot, debug those, and got, like, like uh, Jessica said, 90% uh, of them done. And I just, and I'm going to take advantage of the minute here. I just Please put do. up a, I just put up this page here in which uh, I have been using this for quite a while, and now that uh, I've fix some texture issues of, uh, with that, now people can use a cache bigger than one gigabyte. And they can follow the instructions on there and set up uh, set up a spare drive or whatever. And uh, it will definitely improve their uh, experience in Second Life when they go from uh, sim to sim. So, uh, and Phoenix now fully supports that. Uh, no more fuzzy textures when using a cache. And wow! Uh, I am definitely That's taking. exciting! Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. More pain uh, when I go to the hair stores. The, yeah, one of the complaints was, you know, I heard from general residents, was uh, that one gigabyte, one gigabyte cache was just too small. So I did uh, did some uh, digging and managed to get it going. So now you can use the, uh, now you can take advantage of that one terabyte drive you just bought. <laughs> Thank you so much, TechWolf. That's I really good news. good news. I just want to add to that, because TechWolf is being a little bit modest. Um, for those of you who are on 373 right now, you've noticed that um, textures, everything is very much faster. You've also noticed that you're crashing a lot less. Um, TechWolf is pretty much the sole source of those fixes. He has uh, worked endless hours um, to fix the texture issues in our OpenJPEG that we're using uh, for uh, rendering. And um, so he deserves a big pat on the back.
Well, on behalf of our audience and, and I'm sure all of the Phoenix users, Tech, Tech Wolf, thank you so much for for your contribution and for making this this so much easier for all of us, especially sometimes under very difficult circumstances and very busy sims when nothing seems to load and we're staring yes, at fuzzy I, pictures. Thank you so much. I had to, I had to do a pull a all-nighter to get the Linux build out on time because there was uh, some Linux issues I managed to fix at the last minute. <laughs> Somebody says, can you please repeat how big the cache is done? Uh, within the Second Life client itself, it's limited to one gigabyte. But if you use an external uh, squid proxy cache, you can make it however big you want to, however big that drive is. So you can easily have 100 gig or you can put a spare one terabyte drive on it. So you can download the textures just once and you never have to re-download it again if you set it up properly. So if you put your... Uh, uh, cache on the local computer or you can put it on a computer on your in-home network so if you got more than one Second Life user yeah, they can use the same uh, server and uh, you can have uh, all your textures will be downloaded almost instantly to the client because you're running over your 100 megabit uh, or 1 gigabit uh, network link instead of uh, re-downloading it off the uh, lab servers again. And for the convenience of our um, out-of-world viewers and those watching on the web, that link was http colon forward slash forward slash wiki dot phoenix viewer dot com forward slash dk or d o k u dot php question mark id equals squid underscore proxy underscore cache. And it's a little bit of a mouthful. Yeah, that is and it's linked here in wiki world. Page. That is linked off the main wiki page. Oh, so it's can, linked yeah. off the wi main wiki page. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, so, you know, if you just want to go to wikiphoenixviewer.com, it's right there in the main uh, page right there. All you look for is, uh, I'm looking it up right now. Ah, compat uh, yeah, under the feature list, it says compatible with Squid Proxy Cache. And, uh, Perfect. And Phoenix Viewer is compatible with it. Thank you for the heads up on that. That's going to be, that's going to change so much right now. Linny Odell, I'm moving on to you. Linny Odell is the Windows developer. Hello, Linny, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you? I'm fine. So are you, is this your first time on TV, Linny? Uh, yeah. You aren't nervous, are you? No. <laughs> Lenny, why don't you tell us about uh, how you came to join the Phoenix team? Well, I first started back with developing a Second Life client back on Emerald, actually. Um, but that didn't go over so, so well. The other developers on Emerald didn't necessarily like me, and after a bit, they kicked me out. And one second, the bell's ringing at my house. When okay, of course. <laughs> we always expect this. Trust me, we've Just come to expect this. Now I've got doorbell. Uh, here. There we go. There we hey, it wouldn't be a show without the, the doorbell and the telephone. I've gotten used to that. I'm just glad it was yours this time and not mine, because as everybody can attest who's watched any show that I've hosted, I have a dog who likes to take center stage. So while we're waiting for Linny, oh, there you are. You're the, that was a speedy answer. What would, would you order, pizza? No, it was just parents being home. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, so, so you came on board um, the Phoenix team, and you are the Windows developer. Yes. So, uh, do you do you sort of float around? Uh, do you do you sometimes help TechWolf with Linux, or is, is Windows developing primarily your your position? Uh, I have yet to attempt building Phoenix on Linux myself, but I would be able to do it for myself. I wouldn't be able to help anyone build on Linux. I don't use it that much. I primarily on am on Windows 7, um, but yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing. I, I for when I'm a Windows user, I still use Windows XP because you know I'm resistant to change. The older I get, I find the more I don't like to change things around. So it'll be on XP, XP until they're on like Windows stable. Millennium too. <laughs> yes, I enjoy it a lot. I, God, it's my favorite. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was old. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I remember that. We're going to go to uh, Kaden now. Kate, are you there? 
Can you hear me, dear? I'm here. Hello. Hello. How are you? Windows okay. developer too. Yeah, so do you I'm work running. in partnership with with Liney? Linny? In so much that I make sure he doesn't break things too much. Ah, good. So you guys are like the Burton Ernie of the Phoenix viewer. <laughs> sure. I'll uh, pretend I understand the reference. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you don't watch Sesame oh, yeah, Street. Oh, Burton Ernie. Oh, oh, there guys. you go. I was about to revoke yes, your badge. Yes, Good, I'm glad. So do, tell me about developing so for Windows. Uh, the Phoenix has has been developing it for Windows been a challenge? Uh, or is that the easiest so one? Is that the much. simple one? It's not so much. It's just fixing all the bugs that Linen Labs put in since <laughs> I last worked on it. Like all those bugs that tech were fixing. Those are pretty much all their bugs. They've uh, so graciously given us. What would a virtual world be without bugs? Well, we're glad to have you with us, kid. I'm so glad that you joined us today. Vortex. Yep. Vortex. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing okay. Infrastructure leads. So let me talk to you about that just briefly. What oh. the hell does that mean? Uh, I'm the one who t has, uh, well, ma basically manages uh, the mail system and keep Jira running. And oh. keep a, give a helping hand in every, anybody who needs it. So you are the floater that sort of is there to, to give that guiding uh -huh. hand. Perfect. Well, we're delighted to have you. Thank you for joining us today. Now, Wolf Spirit, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to. I don't know if Wolf Spirit uses voice. Wolf Spirit, do you read me? I believe he does not have a headset. Yeah, I think his headset is broken today. Okay. Well, um, wh also, wh where's I, Wolf? Uh, I, I'll explain Wolf Spirit. Um, thank Wolf, you. Wolf um, has been on uh, support for a long time. Um, and when we started Phoenix, uh, it became clear I, I used to run QA for, for Emerald, and it came, became clear I wasn't going to be able to uh, run QA. So I looked for uh, the best person I could think of uh, to uh, who's really good at um, that type of thing. And Wolf Spirit came to mind, and um, he has absolutely been uh, the best choice I could have made for um, a support lead and or a QA lead. And uh, what he does is uh, he manages a QA team of about 100 people on various operating systems. And uh, we release our betas to them, and they test them. Um, and uh, Wolf has uh, set up some all, all kinds of infrastructure for uh, for beta group and beta testing as well. He's been absolutely priceless to the team. We are delighted to have him here today. Um, let's go to well, next to Wolfman is Wickman, Wolf Spirit, Wickman. I kind of liked Wolfman. Wickman Gibbs, hello. can you hear me? Yeah, hello there. How are you doing today? I am delightful. How are you? Oh, doing great. So your job, your your little nose to the grindstone, is Windows developer, which makes you our third Windows developer. I've uh, recently come to the to the team. I uh, saw the uh, devastation of Emerald and uh, offered my hand to to Jessica, my development uh, and uh, coding and things and. Um, See where I can fit in and uh, help where I can on Windows. That's wonderful. It's nice to have you. I'm so glad that you joined us today. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Ed Merriman is the support team lead. Ed, hello. Uh, hello. How are you? Today? How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm so glad that you came. Ed, why don't you tell us what a little bit your job entails being the support team lead? Uh, basically, it's just uh, keeping on top of the team. We have a great team of people doing support. Uh, finding new people to do support and uh, basically just coordinating. That's what I do. Support team members are out in the audience today cheering you on. Uh, there are several of them, yep. Yeah. Okay, finally, we're moving on to Aaron. Aaron Oberlander, who... Hello, uh, Hi, how are you? I'm great. Uh, I developed on Linux 
and Macintosh, and I've been experimenting with 2.0 viewers and customizing them to be more usable. I'm very happy to be on this team. Have you been with the Phoenix Viewer long? Uh, only since they, uh, only since Emerald ended. Actually, I was shopping for teams to join. I was working on two viewer two customizations on my own for a while, and I started shopping for teams. I wanted to be part of a larger effort. I thought we could be more successful. And I was looking around, and I really liked, I really liked what was coming out of the Emerald uh, development camp. But uh, they had some, they had some internal issues to figure out. And as soon as they figured those out, I got on board. Well, it is a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. That goes to each one of you. I am so glad, and I think that the Phoenix Viewer, as it stands, stands as a testament to your hard work and dedication to this project. So thank you all for, for dedicating yourselves to bringing this to fruition for the benefit of the community. So what we're going to do is we're going to move to questions, because trust me, you have a lot of them. Oh, we actually, I just got a hold of um, LGG, Lord Greg Greg. And oh. he is on his way. <laughs> okay, Literally perfect. Literally never, as they say. But uh, I guess we can start the questions, um, and uh, we'll go back to him and let him have his minute. All right. If we got any that are immediately applied to Lord Greg, Greg, please let me know. Then we'll hold off on that until after he arrives. Uh, the first question that we're going to get is, uh, what is the time frame for a true 64-bit build? Would anybody um, like to feel that? 64 bit. Um, yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> I think I can take that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, for Linux, there's a lot of people that's been building a 64 bit build for Linux for a long time, but this is their own local builds on their own system there. Uh, for releasing a Linux 64 bit build, it's on my to do list, but it's sort of low on the list. For the Windows side, it's a very long ways off because of the. Uh, the compilers that are compatible or are capable of making a true 64-bit build, uh, the code is not compatible with them. And you can blame Linden Labs directly for that problem. So as far as a, six, a true 64-bit build for Windows, a very long ways off. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that we don't take advantage of something. Uh, if you are a Windows user, you will notice on the downloads page there is something what we call LAA on the page, which is called Large Address Aware. And basically what that does is that if you are running a 64-bit operating system, which is Win 7, uh, it will take advantage of more than 2 gigabytes of RAM. It will see more than that. If you're running just Windows XP or anything like that, you're still limited to the uh, memory of those limitations. But, uh, but that, that is one, but that was, uh, but being able to see more than 2 gigs of RAM will definitely help with some crash issues if you have a tendency to go into very heavy primary sims or large events with a huge amount of avatars. It, it should help and we've been getting some uh, pretty good reports on it. So that's uh, pretty much the answer to that one. Okay, that was very illustrious. Please go ahead, Aaron. We have a partner, we work in partnership with Linden Lab, so it's not like we've developed the Phoenix Viewer from utter scratch. Uh, a lot of it is built on the efforts of Linden Labs. In fact, most of it is. So for large effort, for large issues like moving to 64-bit, uh, we really need uh, both Linden Labs and ourselves uh, to be working towards that goal. So this is an issue for, for both of our teams and not one or the other. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brandon Haig, for that question. Um, moving on. Slate Saunders would like to know, area search, what is the distance of detection? Is it affected by draw distance? And does its, and does its, does it self-update once open, or are you supposed to keep clicking search? Uh, that's another uh, one I can answer, because I have experience with that one. Please do. Uh, uh, the search has been recently been changed uh, to use someone else's, which I believe is called Henry in which he improved it and we used his code 
uh, which greatly improved it. Uh, as far as its range is, it's whatever object that happens to be in view or nearby. Uh, on my personal use, I have noticed that because the sim, the way it sends objects, if an object is above you, no matter how high it is, it can find it, uh, which is, I think, is a bit unusual. But I believe it's uh, the way the sim sim objects because I have searched for objects and it was like a thousand meters above me and it found it. But uh, as far as objects literally away from you, it's whatever your draw distance that happened to be set at. And Oh, yeah, region. Pardon me, Vortex, region. Not sim, region. There's a difference. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, basically it's a limited draw distance. So if you're looking for an object in a, in, a, in the entire sim, you know, just set your draw distance as far as out as you can to get the, uh, the region to send you all the objects at once. And it will search through them all. Now, for small objects, it won't get because uh, the uh, region won't send it to you. So you may have to walk around a little bit. But basically, your draw distance, your distance from the object, and if the object happens to be above directly, is basically your main influencing factors for finding objects under the area search. And that's wow, it. Tech Wolf. It looks like you're the man of the hour right now because it's, we have a Linux-related question. Um, let's see. It says... what. Uh, we have somebody wants to know if um, from actually from the phoenix.res.tv website somebody's having trouble getting voice to work so it says I'm having trouble under Linux getting voice sound works fine under Emerald the voice worked fine as well Phoenix compiles fine under Linux though um, that is from Icarus Factor on cover it live and that one I can answer too because I had voice problems on Linux too uh, when I first started uh, doing such a life when I eventually figured out it to get my voice client to work is to use a second sound card and point the voice client to it and that's one solution because certain sound cards just do not share with more than one program so if you can manage to use a second sound card or like a USB sound card device or just stick a second uh, device or, or in my case, I use a sound card for my main sound and I use the onboard sound on the motherboard as a second sound card and then I point the voice to it and, and that's how I got it working on my end. Uh, because the, uh, the voice is separate from the Second Life client. So, it, it is, so sometimes uh, just separating uh, the... Uh, Sound cards that will sometimes help it. I think that's all I could say on that. I think. But I'm sending you a virtual high five tech. Um, I, I that was amazing. I would suggest uh, that Icarus uh, contact our support team. Uh, we have Linux uh, support people that can help you with that. Ah uh, yes, I forgot about that. We do have quite a bit of support team. <laughs> we have, excellent um, support excellent. team, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. we have uh, Mac, developers, Linux. Developers. Um, and yeah, and we've got developers you can message <laughs> if we're um, available anyway. We're usually pretty busy. And I see Lord Greg is here. Um, his microphone is broken, he tells me, uh, so he won't be able to talk. <laughs> we're doing well. That's today. okay, but let's give him an introduction. Mr. Lord Greg Greg has entered the building. Many of us, I'm sure, are familiar with Lord Greg Greg. If you're not, Lord Greg Greg is a lead developer of the Windows operating system version of Phoenix. Correct, Jessica? That's right. And I see Greg can't hear us either. Um, so um, he'll have to take my word for it. Um, <laughs> and he's relogging. So Lord Greg is our Windows lead. Um, he handles uh, all the Windows binaries. So if you're on, a, uh, on Windows and you're on Phoenix, then you're on a build that he compiled. Um, and uh, Lord Greg Greg is very busy. Um, he is not just a dev on uh, the Phoenix viewer, but he also makes the Emergence viewer, um, which is uh, his um, his own version of uh, the same kind of features or feature set. And um, he's also very busy with um, virtual ability, uh, which is a thing in the world for uh, people with disabilities that uh, want to use Second Life. Um, so he spreads himself pretty thin, um, and uh, plus he's got real life stuff going on. So. He's just relogging to get his voice back, uh, so he can at least hear um, everybody and hear us. And well, we're uh, so that's pretty much Lord Greg Greg. All right, that's that's Lord Greg Greg in a nutshell, right? It's Mr. Yeah, Lord Greg Greg. We can yeah. hot button question, you guys. Uh, and I, I'm not exactly sure which one of you would be most appropriate to answer this, but this is a question that I'm sure you get asked quite a lot, because for the 
vast majority of people who um, use Second Life, this is a concern of theirs. So, Sophia Crystal asks, will the viewer to viewer be able to have the 1.23 UI or will the Phoenix viewer get the viewer to features backported? Uh, let me try to answer that as best I can. Um, so the reality is in a, in a perfect world, we would love to be able to maintain the same UI that you guys are all used to uh, in our viewer to uh, build. Uh, the reality is um, that's probably not going to happen. Um, we know that Linden Lab has some big changes coming uh, or that are in the works right now for a UI on, on their viewer 2. And so we're not going to work on the, viewer, on the UI yet on viewer 2 until we know what they're doing because if we make changes to it and then they uh, upload their changes, it may become a, a nightmare for us to merge uh, their updates into our viewer. Um, so we're going to hold off a little bit and see what Linden Lab has in the works uh, in the way of UI changes. And then once we get a good idea of that, then we'll start working on um, seeing what we can do with the UI. Uh, our intention is to make it friendly. Um, if I'm not willing to use it, I'm not going to expect you guys to want to use it. And frankly, I loathe the 2i, uh, 2.0 uh, UI. And um, so we're going to do what we can. But um, unfortunately, making it exactly like 1.23, not likely. Um, it's That would be really hard to do. There's a lot of features that just can't be put into a 1.23 UI. There's going to be a middle way where uh, it's going to be very different from what Viewer 2 is right now. Uh, not exactly what Viewer 1.23 is, but something that is easier to use and more familiar. Yeah, more like a hybrid. You can call it more like a hybrid. I just want to point out, um, Slate asked LGG, um, LGG stated a month ago that he would, wouldn't would update the emergence. Um, has he changed his position on that? And um, because uh, most of you people that are watching the stream can't see text, so I'm just going to read it out. Um, and Lord Greg Greg uh, responded with, there will be an update on my login page about all of that. Just bear with me. need a few things to happen before he posts it. Okay. Moving on, we're going to ask, uh, Southern Riptide has a question. Every time I log in, I have a different number count in my inventory items. doesn't matter how many times I dump my cash. A lot of people are having this problem. They have any thoughts on that problem? So apparently they're logging in and their inventory count is showing different numbers at different times. Um, so have, is that an issue? That, um, I think that they would find that uh, they're going to have that regardless of what viewer they log into. Um, I think actually, uh, Vortex, you would be best to answer that. I can answer that, but uh, it will be get very technical. It has to do with, <laughs> the, with the, the way Linden Lab is sending your information to your viewer. At uh, the moment, it is done in a way uh, when there is actually no control over the data which is sent to you. Which means if some data gets lost uh, in the stream towards your viewer, uh, you will not see that a particular item in your inventory. However, on the viewer 2, uh, uh, it's handled differently. And that's why some people see their inventory come back on Viewer 2. So once we'll move over to Viewer 2, those problems should go away. And just so people know, uh, Vortex Sato is formerly known as Data Linden. Um, and if you've ever had or filed a support ticket that was actually taken care of, it was probably handled by him. And if anybody knows the inventory system, <laughs> it's him. Okay, we've got another question, which is which I find pretty interesting. I want to say her name is Easy McAlpine. It says, hi, I have a question for the Phoenix team. Will mesh support be backported to the Phoenix viewer? Um, in in a word, no. 
there's going to be um, most likely there's going to be too much um, overhead code that needs to be ported as well with that and there's a good chance that uh, it could probably break our existing code base or at least make it very difficult to port or cause us to have loads and loads of bugs with it. Um, so no, we're probably not going to backport mesh, um, but it will be in our Firestorm Viewer 2 uh, viewer. All right, I have a question on behalf of myself. Define for me what the differences will be between Firestorm and Phoenix here as we know it, because I'm not entirely familiar with Firestorm. Okay, so uh, we're going to have two viewers um, at some point. Um, in the future, uh, Linen Lab is eventually going to break um, 1.23 viewers and 1.5 or Snow Globe viewers. Um, Phoenix viewer is based on uh, Snow Globe uh, 1.5 code base. Um, and uh, eventually, like I say, it, it will get broken by Linden Lab because they want everybody moved over to the Viewer 2 code base. Um, so Firestorm is going to be another viewer that we will have, and for a while uh, we're going to have two viewers, probably, uh, hopefully both on the third-party viewer directory, and you guys will have the choice of what one you want to use. Uh, Firestorm is based on Viewer 2 code. Um, and uh, so some of the things that we have to do, and the reason it's going to take us quite a while is because we have over 200 features um, in, in Phoenix Viewer, in the viewer you're all on right now. And um, we need to port, all, well, pretty much the most popular ones, at the very least, into our Firestorm Viewer 2, or version 2 viewer, um, before we can expect you people to want to use it. Uh, I know that I, there's some features I couldn't live without, and I expect uh, you all have features as well that you can't live without. And so um, that's a lot, of, a lot of work. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, a lot of that code needs to be rewritten um, because it, you, you can't just copy-paste it into Viewer 2 code base. The code is different. And um, so a, reality, uh, a realistic time frame, maybe six months, uh, maybe more, maybe less. Uh, it's really hard to say. But so, that is the difference. So, so Phoenix is uh, 1.5 snow globe based, and Firestorm is Viewer 2 based. So Firestorm will have mesh support, correct? Firestorm correct. will have mesh and, and all of the assets, all the assets yeah. like, That's like right. the all those extra things, alpha layers, all those great all those, all extra that, fluffy that items. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, people are going to. Um, so people ask us, you know, if we're going to support this, we're going to support that. We will when we have Firestorm released. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Okay, we're going to um, move on because we have another question from Slate Saunders, who's who's out there enthusiastic in the audience and asks, is there a direction for us as to whether we should be using UDP versus HTTP for textures? Uh, who wants to grab that? I will, because I've done a lot of work on that one. Uh, UDP textures is limited by the simulator to one megabit speed download, and and basically, as everyone knows, that you know that you know textures are very slow to uh, download and res. Uh, oh, Vortex has got a statement on that one coming up. <laughs> uh, oh yes, UDP is also unreliable. Uh, you will UDP was designed to be a what is known as a lossy uh, packet transfer. It was designed for streaming stuff like video and so on, where losing a packet uh, is not a big deal because you just continue right on. And uh, what Linden Labs did, it, they used it to transfer it to textures and all the other assets with. And that's one of the reasons why everyone has problems with uh, textures, assets, inventory, and all that stuff. Uh, what they recently done is they uh, uh, put a new feature into the viewer and enable it on their uh, regions and simulators. Is uh, uh, HTTP texture fetch, which is basically it uh, fetches the textures just like a web browser, uh, just over a different port, but using the same protocol TC TCP, which is very reliable. And then uh, they put no speed limits on that one, so you can download it as fast as your uh, connection to the internet will download it. So that's uh, the reason why uh, HTTP textures is uh, extremely fast. And yes, I've done some uh, performance uh, improvements in three point. Seven, in three in three seven three, so it works a whole lot better than uh, some of the previous viewers and Snow Globe, and, uh, and which came along with the uh, 
Oh, and uh, to enable it, you simply, if you have a Phoenix Viewer, you simply go under Advanced Rendering and just enable HTTP Get Textures. And then you can see all your textures download about 10 times faster if you're on a uh, typical broadband link. Hey, that's a good hint. Thank you for that tip, Techwiff. I didn't know that. So we got to share that with people more often. Definitely spread that one around. Oh, that's the idea of the office hour. That's it. I, I wish I'd known that before, but I've done that a long time ago. A long time ago. All right, so we're going to move on to Rowan Stipe has a question and says, Linux has issues with how the viewer 2 by Linden Lab with some menu options not being shown at all because they're getting the menus from a website. Will this be an issue in the Firestorm project for Linux? Hmm, I'm not sure what he's asking about there. If there was a jar on it, I'd probably take a look at it because basically yeah, all Linux sure. issues go, go my way. I can usually uh, either fix them or figure out that what Linux Lab's doing wrong and either do a workaround or around it. Oh yes, uh, one thing I need to shout out there is that if you decide to enable HTTP uh, get, let's see, what was the name of that? HTTP get textures it is recommended that you clear out your cache because uh, uh, because the two different uh, fetching formats are slightly incompatible with each other and could lead to problems. So if you're going to switch over, uh, you might want to clear out your cache first. Your cache first. Oh, whoops. Well, if I crash in, in the meantime, <laughs> it's too late. I've already done it. Well, so let's just well, keep my fingers crossed. You won't see any problems. In most cases, you won't see any problems. It's just with a few rare textures that cause the problem with. How many people out there people? just ran and did that like I just did? I'm sure everybody <laughs> went and said, oh, hell, I never even knew that was there. We're, I'm doing that now. Yeah. It's kind of what I did. And they won't crash in the majority of the cases. It's, <laughs> they won't crash. They just have uh, some textures that they download from here now on. Uh, or reloading of textures from the uh, local cache may end up a little bit uh, distorted or, or some sculpies distorted or uh, or something like that. And if that happens, they just need to clear out the cache and re-download it using HTTP fix and help fix it. Okay, fair enough. I think that's uh, what I'll do as soon as we're done here, but so far so good. Uh, really, I have not had any problems with the temp, temp textures because I have uploaded temp textures and not had any problems downloading them because uh, the code automatically falls back to using UDP. If it can't fetch a texture, which is true for temp textures, it will fall back to UDP to fetch that texture. So that's why uh, temp, temp texture uploads will still work. You know, the, because one of the features of the Phoenix Viewer is you can upload temporary textures without spending the 10, the 10 Linden dollars. And they will still work because we use the uh, fallback. All right, let me just quickly address Rowan. Rowan Stive from from uh, the audience. Um, your, why don't you go and open um, a JIRA with that concern? Because that sounds like where it would be best serviced with regards to the menu options. Um, but we're going to move on because somebody, Brandon Hayek again, hello Brandon, wants to know what happened to the firestorm being snowstorm based. Um, well, it still is. Uh, we actually, to be absolutely honest, uh, we haven't had enough time to start working on it, uh, to dedicate ourselves to it, because um, our previous version was 225, and as many of you know, uh, we had all kinds of sculpty issues, uh, texture issues, um, crashes, and all kinds of things like that. And so uh, we kind of put Firestorm on the back burner uh, temporarily until we can get um, a nice, solid, stable release out for you folks, because once we start on Viewer 2, um, our uh, 1.5 based viewers, uh, the releases are going to be more sparse uh, than they have been. Um, so we really wanted to focus on getting a solid, stable release out for everybody that everybody's happy uh, with being on, and um, that way we can start working on Firestorm. We will be moving to Firestorm now. And um, it is uh, Firestorm, Snowstorm is, is uh, a term that Linda Lab is using, um, and we call it Firestorm because it uh, kind of has a nice ring to it. I quite like it too. Yes, we are using Snowstorm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have about five minutes left. I would encourage you to, if you have questions, please send them to Toxic Menges. If you are interested, this also will be available for download on the phoenix.res.tv website. 
and you can also also access that from res tv res dot tv I just, I just have to laugh because somebody shouted out, please fix viewer two. Um, well, oh. we, uh, <laughs> that's our intention. <laughs> I, you know what's hard about doing this? Sometimes I have to refrain from comment. <laughs> yeah, one of the yeah. obstacles to getting Firestorm out is that the viewer 2.0 series was had such a UI fail that it's going to take quite a bit of effort to try to fix that. Because, and that's uh, why that's we have true. people like Tech Wolf. <laughs> I can so keep my mouth shut and you do the talking for me, stars. I'm taking you home. Our, uh, our roadmap for um, for our uh, uh, for our viewer two is um, basically is uh, we're going to try to start moving features over into it without playing with the UI too much, because like I guess mentioned earlier, uh, Linen Lab has some big UI changes down down the road, and um, so we don't want to make changes to the UI and then have to revert everything. Um, so we're going to start porting uh, and, and moving features um, that uh, your guys are all used to right now in 1.5 into our Firestorm project. Um, and try not to affect the UI as much as possible so that uh, when those UI changes do come down from Linolab, uh, we can start um, fixing UI stuff. So we're kind of crippled in a way. Um, we don't know what Linolab has planned for the UI. All we know is that they've got big things planned for it. Uh, we right, but Jessica, not knowing, no, I'm sorry to interrupt, but not knowing um, what they have planned, does that mean that some features that are currently in the Phoenix Viewer might not work in the right. future? Yep, and, and that's when I say that it, it, we're somewhat, um, I won't say crippled, but we're handicapped um, because we don't know uh, what exactly is going to get broken and what won't get broken, what is safe to, what features are safe to move over and what features aren't safe to move over yet. Um, and so, uh, you know, I give an estimate of uh, six months, give or take, but that also depends almost entirely on Linden Lab and how long it takes them to get those UI changes out to us and to, uh, you know, the code base. Um, so, you know, if I promise six months and Linden Lab doesn't push those changes out for a year, um, don't blame me. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of guesstimating six months because I think that's a reasonable amount of time. Um, for them to get the UI changes out and for us to, um, you know, start moving and, and get the most, at least the most popular features into Firestorm um, for you folks to use, so. Okay, well, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Aaron. Uh, I was saying that we'll be starting at Viewer 2 and working, in a way, back towards some of Phoenix's features. So we'll have all the, the 2.0, 2.2 features right away, and we'll, still, we'll slowly start adding the features that people uh, know and love from Phoenix. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I got something here to add. Uh, someone yeah, absolutely. Just in the local chat, he says, just kill the uh, GD sidebar there. Uh, Linden Labs is working on fixing that sidebar thing. Uh, from some of the reports I've been seeing is that they are, right now they have tear off tabs with the sidebar and they're also thinking about uh, get, getting some floaters back in you know, like the profile photos because that is a major complaint is that you just can't easily transfer inventory from one person to another so they're going to start working on trying to fix that and uh, so there's yeah, some big changes yeah mm -hmm. big changes um, coming down um, from them let me just ask a question on behalf of Warren. Warren. Oh, hello. Do you know, I was just telling this story the other day, you guys. When when Bouncy Boobs was integrated, I didn't, I, you know, I, I, I only started using that feature about a month prior to moving to Phoenix. And um, I'm really disappointed because when I turned on the feature, I was with a bunch of friends, and what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to bounce around. I was hopping and squatting and jumping and leaping. My boobs didn't move. My boobs didn't move. And you know it's because I have a flat-chested avatar. I am like Justin Bieber. I look fabulous, but there's just nothing happening. Well, so we have we we know that <laughs> we know that um, our, our breast physics aren't perfect, um, and nobody seems to have been able to make them better. Although a lot of you, oh, they look great on everybody else. But let me tell you, I have small boobies. 
a small baby. You know what? I, I tell you what I did. I gave myself some slider surgery, and then I jumped up and down, and then it was happening for me. And then it worked. Then there was much, and then I looked like Pamela Anderson on Baywatch. <laughs> I wanted to put on a bikini and run out, run down a beach in slow motion. So, well, the rumor, the rumor is, and I'll just call it a rumor because I, I don't think there's been any factual. I don't think any linen has actually made it a fact, but the rumor is that Linen Lab is working on breast physics for viewer two, and hopefully they'll get it better than we do because we do have a lot of bugs with um, breast physics. So, uh, nice, still uh, awesome. Breast physics in Linen Labs is currently on the backlog, so it is definitely on their plate to do inside Linen Labs. And apparently, some information I've got on it, they're going to make it a wearable object. So, it is the uh, person that wants to have their. Uh, boobs bounce, they have to wear an object. If they don't want to make it bounce, they just simply don't wear that particular object, which is different from Emerald's uh, boob oh, physics, in which everybody sees everybody's uh, uh, boobs bounce. And that's the main difference. <laughs> Only in Second Life will you ever have a conversation like this, ladies and gentlemen, I can <laughs> promise you. Only. Only in Second Life. Um, I'm just going to briefly, we're getting ready to close. Ladies and gentlemen, we only have a couple of more questions, so we're going to get to them right away. Born Denimore says, I'm getting a problem with a system error pop-up. Try to reinstall and place my file as advised, but I'm still getting the QTWEB kit 4 DLL missing error. Any ideas on how I can fix this issue? Um, first, I'll say I'll just say that uh, media is a pain in the butt. Um, even viewer two, a linen lab viewer two, even they have trouble uh, getting media to work for everybody. Um, we've had trouble getting media to work for everybody. Emerald, uh, when Emerald was around, had trouble getting media working for everybody. So basically, Snow Globe and Viewer Two Code um, have some big issues with media, and it's in the way that media is handled. Whereas in 1.23. Um, the, it's a totally different method of, of handling media. So um, as far as media goes, we're trying to get it to work for as many people as we possibly can, but we can't seem to get it to work for everybody. Um, on that note, I would suggest um, contact our support team, um, and you can get the, you can find our in-world uh, support groups at uh, on our wiki, uh, wiki.phoenixviewer.com. And uh, there's a list there of in-world groups, um, and in there are all of our language groups, including English. And uh, somebody from support can try to help you, but um, we can't promise anything. Media is a real pain in the butt. And quickly on to Tools Army. Shan, is there a way to find out the cause of random crashes? It would be nice to get a file or line so they can see exactly where the error occurred. Um, absolutely. Um, crash logs. Um, although crash logs aren't really informative, uh, they can help developers get an idea of, of where you're crashing. Um, again, I'd suggest contact our support team. Uh, they can teach you how to grab your crash logs and how to file a bug JIRA on our JIRA um, that uh, the developers will uh, get to and take a look at and see if we can figure out what's going on with you and we can get back in touch with you or support will. And um, and as well, you can put your crash log on that bug report uh, for us uh, to see it. Uh. So. And no, don't ahead. forget to upgrade, too. We have a new viewer out. Just, uh, just a reminder on the crash logs, uh, please be aware that in the crash log, there can be personal data. Oh, that's right, yeah. Like your computer username, things like that. Uh, in fact, if you're going to file um, crash logs, it's best to do um, a support JIRA, because we also do support tickets uh, from, from the same interface, the JIRA interface, and basically when you go there, you click on create issue, and you've got a couple of projects there you can choose from, the Phoenix viewer or a support, um, and you click support, and basically your support requests are only viewable by developers and support team members, and uh, so if you put your crash log there, uh, we're the only ones that will see that. Also, why don't you provide the link for the Phoenix viewer JIRA? Oh, yes. Well, it's JIRA, J-I-R-A, dot phoenixviewer.com. Um, and uh, I think somebody's going to paste that up in here as well. And um, again, that will take you to uh, a, a page you might not have seen or you might find familiar because we use the same application that Linden Lab uses for their bug reports. And um, you go in there, uh, sign up. 
um, use your real email address and if you can use your SL name um, but don't use your SL password okay uh, just make up a new password that you won't forget um, and uh, from there you click on create issue and you can create a bug report or you can create a, um, a, a support uh, ticket okay so just in closing Jessica it looks like that we've seen some old faces up here on the panel that we know and recognize Lord Greg Greg for instance um, vortex and we see some some new faces as well who've joined the team to lend their talents and abilities to help consistently improve the Phoenix Viewer and bring it to where the community really wants it to be and it's already well on its way so is this the family complete or, or are you considering bringing on new people in the future to join the development team we are short a few people here we actually have 13 developers uh, last I counted and um, lucky 13 and uh, we will probably recruit more in the near future especially once we start uh, really focusing on viewer 2 because we're going to need as much help as we can um, and I'd also like to clear up something because I get a lot of people say uh, like with 373 release for example it's a really good release and a lot of people um, I am me and say great job Jessica and I just want to say that the people to the left of me are the ones who deserve all the credit Oh, that's Actually, amazing. I prefer that if Jessica did get all the IMs. That means when I log in, I don't have uh, IM caps. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I get my IMs are capped. Um, if I'm offline for like an hour or two and I come back on, my, island, I, my IMs have been capped. It's crazy. <laughs> that means you're popular. Uh, well, popular or, or, well, I don't know. <laughs> People know about me, apparently. Who adore you? Of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first Res TV presents the Phoenix Hour with the Phoenix Viewer developers here on the stage. Thank you, Jessica Lyon, Tanya Southern, Lord Greg Greg Back, who's back, Tech Wolf Lapindo, Linio Dow. I want to say, I always want to say her name wrong. Kata. Kata Koba. Kata. Kata Koba. Canada. Canada. Oh, I'll get it I'll eventually. Get it eventually. <laughs> It'll happen one of these weeks, trust me. Vortex Seisho, Wolf Spirit Magic, Wickman Gibbs, Ed Merriman, and Aaron Oberlander. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, there is a new version of the viewer out. Jessica, why don't you tell them your URL so they can go and download it immediately because it's apparently the best. All right, so phoenixviewer.com and click on downloads and it will take you there. Uh, there are three versions for Windows. There's SSE, or also known as non-SSE2, um, which is for older computers. There is SSE2, which is for newer computers. And there is SSE2-LAA, which is large address aware, which we mentioned earlier, is for primarily 64-bit operating systems with more than four gigs of RAM. Uh, it takes advantage of additional memory. Um, and we have our Linux uh, release in there, and we have our Mac release in there. Um, and by pretty much all accounts, um, I'd have to say that this is absolutely our best release yet. Um, we've resolved all of the crash problems for most people, and we're very proud of this release. I'd also like to say that um, this is the first of a series of office hours, which we'll be doing um, every other week. So not, this, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, we'll be doing this again. Absolutely. And with any luck, we'll all be back. At least I know I will. Probably with a different hair. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Res TV and the Phoenix Viewer, I am Phelan Fairchild. This is the Phoenix Hour. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to the audience for the questions. I encourage you to come back in two weeks with more. To the people watching on the web, thank you so much for joining us. And please remember, this will be available on Res TV. TV available for download now and future our episodes will be archived for the future for your reference so thank you everybody for joining me and have a lovely day or night wherever you may be